Hi, my name's Marcia and welcome to Cotton Street Commons. Today for our video, we're going to do two things. One, we're going to work through a tutorial on a brand new pattern. It's called the Return of the Poncho. I'm going to show you right here and let me show you in real life what they look like. This is the front and then it has a really cute hood and here is the back. As you can see, there are a lot of flying geese on there. And this, if you didn't know, is a flying geese. Let me show you the other one I made. I used a white background for this. And here is the back of the poncho. And I love the coordinating hood that goes with it. Before we get into the flying geese, let's talk about the poncho one more time. Again, here's the pattern cover. And we showed this at QuiltCon and all kinds of people tried them on and it was so fun. We had girls, boys, men, little cute older ladies. And let me give you a list really quickly of what all the things they thought they could do with the poncho. Ladies were buying it for going camping and sitting out at the campfire. Uh, one really great thing if you happen to be in a wheelchair is unlike a quilt which you'd wrap around your legs you have to worry about getting caught up in the wheel so in this case it sits on their lap they can put their hands underneath it and stay warm and it covers up their legs uh, it's great for surfers it's great for game day how many of you go to those games in the cold put the poncho into your school colors and you are set I happen to live in northern Utah, and even if it's 30 degrees outside, if the sun's out, I don't want to wear a coat. I usually put on a vest, or in this case, I'll put on my poncho. Uh, I've got some airiness on the sides, and it keeps me snugly warm, and you can't get better than having a hood. So let's now talk about flying geese, because that's the critical part to our design. Let me show you. Right now, a flying geese tutorial, and this is about sizing because that's what's most important are the measurements. And it will be under the free pattern section so that you can get and a reminder of the measurements. I'm gonna demo today a couple of ways to do flying geese. One of them is called the four at a time. What's the benefit of this? Well, one, it's faster, and two, there's less fabric waste. So. I can make four of them all at once. That works okay on the poncho because the poncho as we see it has mostly only two colors in all of it. But what happens if I need to mix up those colors? I'm gonna show you in just a minute a combination of fabrics. A friend of mine named Johnny asked me if I would make him a poncho and that's what we'll be demoing throughout the day but he wants it scrappy and we have different fabrics for every single one of them. So now we've got to come back and do a one at a time flying geese. Okay, here we go. So for a four at a time flying geese, our most important parts are our width here and our height here. So again, width and height, width and height. So our finished flying geese for these purposes is going to be six inches wide by three inches high. So to do four of them, we need one large block, one large block and four small blocks. So with our one large block, four small blocks, now we need the size. So again, we talked about a six inch wide flying geese. So no matter what size you want, we're going to add an inch and a half to that measurement. So in this case, instead of six inches, we have got a seven and a half inches. Uh, let's see if you can see that really quickly. Um, seven and a half inches. And then we're going to make it square. So I cut a seven and a half inch by seven and a half inch square. For my smaller squares, I'm going to go four inches by four inches. Remember, our height is normally going to be three inches, so I'm going to add one inch to my three inches, which makes it four inches. Now, remember, this is all written up 
on this, which will be on the website. So next thing we need to do is mark our four blocks. I've got them on the wrong sides and I am going to draw a diagonal line from one point to the other. Okay, I've got one more to go. Again, I'm gonna put it right on that line. And I've traced my line. Now, on here, my large block, I'm gonna take my first two that I've drawn and we have a little bit of play, but I'm gonna line them up in that corner out there. I'm gonna put a quick pin just to hold it in place. And I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna do the same thing. And as you can see, my line makes a continuous line, lining up towards the corner. These are a little larger, and we've done that on purpose because it gives us some trimming room. So now I'm going to head to the sewing machine, and I'm going to stitch one quarter inch on either side of this line. So remember, I'm going to stitch one quarter inch on the line. Remember, I'm going to stitch one quarter inch off the line on both sides. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine and I used a darker thread this time so that you could kind of see. I've got my pencil line now and I'm first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my scissors. You could do this with a rotary cutter. I forgot before I tell you, remember when we laid those down, they overlapped a little bit and you want it to overlap. So I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut along this line. And now I've got two pieces. One thing I want to do with the flying geese is because there's a lot of layers and a lot of sharp corners is I want to press my seams open. So I'm going to set my seams. Make sure you can see that. I'm going to set my seams. And then I'm going to come back. I'm going to press these two seam or the seam, I guess it's one seam, two sides. Open this up. I'm going to press that seam open. I'm going to come and press it from the other side. Now, if you can see real quickly, I've got a little piece of fabric up here. I want that fabric up there. And now let me set the iron out of the way for just a second. Um, I'm now going to take one of my blocks, here's my line I've drawn, right sides together, and this time I'm going to put it down in this corner, and I'm going to have it, and it goes up and past. So I lined up on this corner, it's like I've got a little fox face or some little eyes. I'm going to throw a pin in there for me to hold it in place. I'm going to do the same thing with the other piece. Then I'm going to go to the sewing machine, and again, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to sew a quarter inch on either side of this line. So let me go do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've come back from the sewing machine. As, as you can see, I've sewn down both sides. I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm going to cut on my pencil line. Do that with both pieces. Then I'm going to cut on my pencil line. And now let's press it open. Set my seam. 
open it up and again I'm going to press this seam open and again I'm going to press this seam open Flip it to the other side. Here we go. We're not done yet. We're going to trim. Let me get the other three ready. Okay, we've got our block to this point, but now we need to trim it up. And we're going to trim it up to six and a half by three and a half. And again, this is my very most important point right there. That point of that flying geese, I need to make sure I've got a quarter inch above that. So I'm going to take a six and a half inch ruler, which I happen to have, but you can choose whatever size. And I know that halfway over of six and a half inches is three and a quarter. I don't know if you can see that right there, but there's my three and a quarter line. And I'm going to line that up with my point. Just like that. Now, the nice thing about these true cut rulers is I have this guide and it's on all four sides. So I'm going to get in my guide and I'm just going to whip down that side. I'm going to rotate this around. I'm going to, I'm going to rotate this around. Let's see. I'm going to rotate the block around. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put that line at my three and a quarter right now. Okay, I've got my sides trimmed up. Now we need to get this going here. So I'm going to come along. And again, I'm going to find my quarter inch mark. Which is this larger slash right here. I'm going to line up here because that's a good line and that's a good line. So I've got that on my quarter inch. I'm maybe only trimming tails or the tiniest of things off. And then I'm going to come back down for one more cut. This time I'm just going to line everything up. Put this on my three and a half. I've got my two edges where I want them to be. And I'm just going to trim down that little bit. Now I've got a perfectly trimmed. Now I've got a perfectly trimmed. Now I've got a perfectly trimmed flying geese. And again, my important part is this point, and I've got a quarter inch there. Now I'm going to make an individual one. And in this case, I've got three and a half by six and a half. My finish size is going to be three by six, same as our other one. This is what the pattern calls for, the poncho pattern. And so that's why I'm going to show you this one. I've got two white squares that are three and a half inch by three and a half inch square. I've gone ahead and done my line on those. Let me do a line on one more. I just match up those points. It's the easiest way for me. Put my ruler down and with my pencil, I'm gonna draw. So, next I'm gonna pin. Now I've come back with my other two. These are my one at a time flying geese. Remember I sew on this line and then I skipped over a half inch and I sewed another line. And I'm just gonna make a quick cut. And I get my flying geese. And I get a half square triangle. Same thing here. Forgot I sewed on this side with my line so I could see my line. Cut. Flying geese, or no, oh, sorry, half score triangle, flying geese. These also still need to be trimmed down to get them really accurate. 
it's almost time to start on the poncho, but let me show you what got picked for the poncho. This is going to be his background, which is a wonderful Essex. He wanted blues, tan, so we picked out these fabrics. So I can't wait to get the flying geese made and to show you the layout. We've also picked this fabric to be our binding and our hood on the poncho. So again, here we go. I'm going to get everything cut. I'm going to sew the flying geese and then we will be back to lay it out and show you the rest of the poncho. Now we're going to talk about half square triangles. So I start with my smaller block. There are two of these blocks for each of our larger block. I'm going to mark on them so I have a sewing line and I line it up with my lines here on my mat coming quickly. I just, in this case, I'm using a white chalk. As you'll remember in the demo, I showed you with a lot of darker things, but I just need it to show up. Hopefully you can see that. Let's mark one more. I don't need a very dark line, but you might. So let me do this a little thicker. So there you can see we've got them lined. I've got them lined on all four of these pieces. Now I'm going to take my large fabric and I am going to line up one piece on this side. This is going to be the top and this is going to be the bottom. So I've got that lined up here to here. I like to put a little pin in it just to kind of hold it in place. And especially when I'm using this Essex, it tends to slip around a little bit. So let's do the same thing with our next piece. Again, my line is the point in the center of the top. I'm gonna to put a little pin in it. Okay, for today, I've already been to the sewing machine. So here's what I came out with. And one exciting thing about this method is, as you can see, I chain pieced. Let's get them all turned around here. I used the thread that would show up so I can do all of them at one time chain piecing. Now, so if you wanna make the half square triangles, I'm gonna add a second sewing. And I do this while I'm all still hooked together and chain piecing. This was my first line that I drew. Now I'm gonna come and I go a half inch out and draw a second line. That becomes my seam line. So as you can see, as we've gone throughout, I still have my double lines all the way through. I'm gonna clip these apart very quickly like that. I'm gonna come back and you can use a rotary cutter or just your scissors and I'm going to cut right down through the middle. Now again, especially when I'm using this heavier linen, I am going to press my seams open. Sometimes it's easy and sometimes it wants to give me a problem, but this one's working quite well. I then like to turn it over and really give it a good pressing down. Okay, for our next step, I've done that with all of my triangles and I have this look with all of them. I'm now going to take another marked piece and I'm going to lay that. My point here is in the middle at the top. These two fabrics overlap, put a pin in it and I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine. Maybe I'll show you here. I did the same thing. There's the first line drawn. Let me show you beforehand, drawing that line. I line up my first line. I go over half an inch and I give myself a second seam line. I'm gonna sew this time on both lines. 
this is what I came out with after doing that. You can see I've got two lines. Uh, I'm going to cut them apart now. And let's press one. I set the seam. I turn it over. And I'm pressing those seams open. I just think it makes for a prettier garment and a smoother seam. I'm gonna come from the side and press. And now if you can notice right here, I have got a perfect quarter inch above that point. And that's what you want when you get ready to go, is a perfect quarter inch. Here you can see several of them all ready. And again, I've got that perfect quarter inch. Now it's time to go back and sew my rows together. I'm gonna to take you to my living room floor and there's our pattern layout. On the front, I've already done all the half square triangles and I've got it laid down and ready to sew together. So here's the front. And then quickly, this one isn't placed as well together. Here's kind of what the back's going to look like. Good morning. I am back again and I have accomplished a lot. And I like to show the end place where we're heading before I show you how we got there. So let me show you how we're heading. Remember, we are working on the return of the poncho. I am doing it in a guy's version for a good friend of mine. He's picked out the fabrics and we decided to do it uh, with an eclectic mix of fabrics, a scrappy look rather than only using two colors. So let's see if we can hold this up a little bit. It's a little big, so I can't get it all in the camera. But if you can see, this is going to be the front of the poncho, and we've got all our flying geese triangles placed. Now we're gonna talk about how I got to that point. So if you're ready, we're gonna start with the half square triangles, which we've already had a tutorial about. So I'm gonna show you how I did it for this scrappy version. There are special templates in the pattern to cut the neck pieces. So this is the start or the top of the poncho and I will be cutting the neck piece out of that. So to begin with, we're gonna fold it in half. Then I'm gonna go down and show you how we place a template. And I'm going to go on the fold. And again, it marks top edge and it marks fold line. You can do this a couple ways. I pin it on and I just cut by hand. You can trace around here if you'd like to, but I'm gonna cut away just this simply following the cutaway on my template. Now we've got our back neck ready. This is the last component we're gonna work with, and this is actually going to be the hood. So again, I've got just my rectangular piece, and I'm gonna fold it in half. I have a template for this also. So once I get to this point, we're gonna go down and I'll show you how to line up the template. We're gonna fold it on the shorter length. Again, all these specifics are in the pattern. I've got a crease line right there. Here's my next template, and I'm gonna fold, line that up on my fold line. I'm gonna line up here. I wanna secure that with three pins, and I'm gonna come back, and I'm gonna cut away that little part. This is actually gonna create our seam line and I will fold right sides together 
And now, let's smooth up my line. That comes from cutting quickly. This is gonna be a seam line and it's gonna create the top of our hood and be a little bit smoother coming down. I'm gonna go and put all these things together and then we will be back for our next step. I have made a lot of progress. I've got the front, which is here, and now I've got the back, the back all put together. I've got my shoulder seams. My shoulder seams are sewn. Let me turn it inside out for a minute. Before you sew those shoulder seams together, I've got my batting in. So my batting is sewn into this particular seam. That's the way we get to hide it. We talked about the hat and I've got the hat sewn now. If you remember, we made that cut, we made that cut here and we sewed that little curve. This is the outside of the hat. I sewed the batting into this seam just like we did on the poncho itself and now I'm going to take my lining and I've got my wrong sides together and I'm going to put my wrong side in so wrong sides are touching put these glasses on real quickly and let me pin this and I'll show you what I've done I have pinned at that seam right there now the rest of it will just all slip in so again, I'm putting my lining inside of my hood. Now I've got a hood. I'm going to put a couple of pins down the sides just to hold it in place. You could do a big basting stitch if you wanted, but I found that pins work just fine for me. Now I've got my hood, there's my lining. So my lining showing and there's my hood. It's this time right now where you wanna go to the machine and do any quilting that you wanna do and move on to how to put it on to our poncho. As you can see, here's the front of the poncho. And so I'm working with the back side. I'm going to find the center in the back side. Put those together. If we can see this. And there is the center. So here's our hood. This is the right side here. Right side's there. You can see I ran some pins down the center. And now we're going to attach it and get ready to sew it into our poncho. So I'm going to find the center. I just fold things in half to find a center. You can measure if you prefer. I've got a little pin in the center. I'm going to take my poncho and I'm on the back side and I've already found the center and I put a pin. I'm going to take my two pins that I've got in the centers. I'm matching them up. And I'm going to pin that in place. Now I'm going to come around the poncho and I'm making sure all my edges are even and I'm going to pin quite close together as I work my way around. Right now I've come to this little edge where the front meets the back of the poncho. Again, making sure all my layers are even. Let me go ahead and put a pin right there. That brings me around to the front now, and it doesn't go all the way across the front, and I'm just gonna finish that out. Eek, you say, I've got raw edges sitting here, and that's okay because we're gonna come back with a final step of binding after everything's all put together. I'm going to continue to pin around the other side and 
I'm going to go stitch it together and then we're ready to put our lining inside. Welcome back. I am getting so excited. We've got the hood sewn on, as you can see here, and up it goes. Let me show you from the front. You'll see here, it doesn't come all the way around, and that's okay, because that's where our binding's gonna go. And there's our hood. You can see it from the back. Here's our lining, and I've got it with right sides in, and the wrong side is out. I'm gonna slip it over the poncho. So now I've got right sides touching right sides. You wanna make sure that hood goes inside. So I've pretty much filled it all the way around. As you can see, I can't see any of the poncho. I've got the outside poncho inside of the inside poncho. I've got right sides going together, and right now that's part of my hood. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find the shoulder seam, which is here, and here's the shoulder seam on this. And I'm gonna line those two up, and I'm gonna pin that in place. I'm gonna come around to the other side and do the same thing. There's my shoulder seam. Here's my shoulder seam. Pinning those two together. And then it's just a matter of pinning the rest of it together. Put it together. I'm pinning around the neck now because that's the only place we're gonna sew the two pieces together. I've got the back, as you can see, all pinned. Coming around to the front. I'm going over top of the hood, remember. And I'm excited because I have a perfect matchup from my lining to my outside poncho. I don't know if you can see, but there it's pinned. From the outside, all we see is lining. And on the inside, all I feel is batting. I can't see the hood at all right now. So that's the way we want it to go. I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and attach this real quickly. We have one more step and that's binding. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with a binding. So let's just remind you, I have a pretty much solid hood. It's actually done of grunge. So it does have some dimension to it, but this is a scrappy poncho. So we decided to go with a scrappy binding. Um, that's always a fun way. I've used all the fabrics that are in the thing. A couple of things let me show you. Remember when you're doing it, we're gonna press the seams open. For the poncho, I have done a two and a half inch binding or my cut two and a half inches because I want just a little wider binding on it because I want it to make a statement. So a little bit different than we might bind a quilt. I'm gonna find the center, which is right here. And I'm going to take the center and I'm going to put it in the center. I'm going to pin it to the center of the front. And I will show you. Let's see if I can work backwards. All right. There it is pinned in the very front in the center. Now you'll notice there's no raw edges here, but we're still going to take the binding over it. And... I have pressed down this seam so I have a nice flat area to work with. I'm going to show you. We now have where this makes almost a straight L, but we're going to work our way around it, easing our binding around it. I'm not going to make any turns or curves with it. And it actually goes really well, as you can see. I'm just going to ease it on. I'm going to continue up the side. Put a couple more pins in. You want to pin really well right here at this seam. So again, you can see there's the inside. A couple more pins right here in this curved area. Now I'm gonna work my way around. 
I have come around to the back of the hood. Let's get back there. Again, I'm just pinning everything right now. And now I have a little cheat for binding, especially binding for what we're doing here. Again, I'm going to find, let's see, I'm going to come around to the back and I have overlapped my two bindings, my two pieces of binding. I'm going to find the center or a good place to cut. I'm going to cut through both layers of binding exactly even. I'm going to take it off. I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam to sew it together. And then I will go ahead and put the whole binding on. Okay, I'm back with our pieced binding around the hood. I am so excited. If you can see, let me show you how it came out. Isn't that fun? Really scrappy. I can kind of show you on the back. If you look close again, we've got our scrappy binding. There's our hood. That's where we're going to stop. So let me show you quickly. Here's our poncho. Here's the front. Bindings made a nice round collar there. Now just to wrap it up, let's remind you where we started. Again, this is Return of the Poncho. And here's the back side, which is beautiful. We decided to make a scrappy version, as you can see here. And we've even done a scrappy binding. And this is made for my friend Johnny. He happens to be my quilter. And so it's going to go off to him and he's going to do his thing. And then it'll get a finished binding as soon as all the quilting's done. Thanks for joining me today. I just want you to know I do have a YouTube channel. It's uh, Cotton Street Comments on YouTube. And I try to put tutorials that go along with some of the patterns that we do. This video is going to get added to the channel and attached to the poncho so that you can remember what it is you've seen today. Again, thanks for joining me and follow along with Cotton Street Commons.